This episode brought to you by the Dollar Shave Club. A great shave at a great price, conveniently delivered right to your home. Just let me watch it! Oh, for God's sake! Hey, Critic, what's up? <sighs> Nothing, I'm just trying to watch Country Bears. Are you sure you mean Country Bears? Yes! The Disney ride? Yes! Why? Oh, for God's sake, it's gonna go on and on and on and on! Hey, 911? Yeah, there's no way that this can't be an emergency. I'm a nostalgia critic guy, remember it, so you don't have to. Today's movie has a bit of a reputation. Kind of like Disney has had over certain periods of time. Through the constant ups and downs, Disney has always found some niche to creatively exploit in that you need little creativity to exploit it. You name it, directed DVD sequels, kid rock stars, and it turns out even then they were trying too hard, as all they had to do was re-release their animated movies with the lines erased. Well, at this creatively bankrupt point in their lives, they were really big into turning their rides into movies. They had a big hit with Pirates of the Caribbean, a big miss with The Haunted Mansion. But all of this began with the most bizarre of rides to start this most bizarre of trends, The Country Bears. so rushed they forgot to even put Jamboree in the title. This is a movie I've referenced a lot in the past, but I'll admit have never seen all the way through. I just fast forwarded to the Christopher Walken scenes. And so did you. The film was less than a hit at the box office, got pretty torn apart by critics, and was often the punchline of jokes about unsuccessful Disney films. Knock knock, who's there? Country Bears! Country Bears who, exactly? It drew my attention more, though, when I saw Animaniacs writer and producer Peter Hastings directed it. This dude has had some big titles under his belt, so I figure something of value has to come out of it. And yes, I'm aware I just said something of value has to come out of the Country Bears movie. How much, you may ask? Well, let's willingly find out. Let's put on the 2002 cinematic question mark. Country Bears. The film opens trying to convince us that the Bears were a legit country band. And I'm not gonna lie, they try so hard to make it look legit, it's kind of hilarious. I'm just waiting for VH1's Behind the Music intro to play around it. The Bears sold out countless shows to millions of confused-looking fans. Sometimes they'd even stare blankly at the stage like lifeless mannequins. But then everything changed when the Teddy Grahams Bears began touring. Fuck those guys. The Country Bears officially broke up after the 91 Hibernation Tour. Taking into account there were no bears in that audience. Many blame human grizzly segregation. Willie Nelson, a former Country Bear himself, drew much influence. I learned a lot from those guys, and that was why I was so sad to see them break up. Now I'm just figuring out now that they were real and not a result of the wacky tobacco. See, that's the real tragedy. This little guy watching TV is Barry, voiced by Haley Joe Osmond, who nowadays could play this role without the suit, and he can't help but feel like he doesn't belong with his family. Mom, am I adopted? <laughs> Okay, I'll admit, I'd be lying if I said this kind of joke didn't always get a laugh out of me, but it could have used Steve Martin saying, You mean I'm gonna stay this color? Critic? Yeah? I, uh, I thought I heard you laughing. Well, yeah, I saw a funny scene. Okay, well you are aware that you're watching Country Bears, right? For God's sakes, I'm giving this movie a fair shot, even if it is Country Bears! <laughs> okay, I know, you're totally fine in there, Critic. You're totally... That's a lie, and I need you to get here as soon as possible. Code blue. 
Code Blue. Barry has to deal with his early 2000s brother Dex, who I swear are all bought from a restore, who constantly mocks Barry. And can you blame him? The parents are kind of needlessly cruel to him. Even if you were adopted, we would love you as much as we love Dexter. Maybe more. He's right there! He does get a pretty funny comeback scene, though. Wow, really? And did you know that nobody cares? <laughs> that face is hilarious. As if his father is thinking, My god, he stopped me with a spoon. I can no longer control him. It's legit funny. I'm fine! Things escalate pretty fast when Dex comes in and reveals that he's adopted and Barry decides to run away. Like, just within a few minutes. Don't worry, though. Emotional pacing is as important in this film as getting that psychotic face of death off Barry's mug. I didn't know both eyes could twitch. You may think I referenced the lack of emotion in this film as a bad thing, but to the film's credit, it knows not to waste time on stuff like this. It's aware that a lot of people watching are simply tuning in to see how goddamn crazy it gets. And brother, they deliver on that fast! Enter Christopher Walken as Reed Thimple. An evil businessman who wants to tear down Bear Hall. And I swear to God, I have never seen Christopher Walken act so serious. He actually seems more comfortable acting with animatronic bears than he does real people. Six years, $20,000. Must be tough. Do you like the sound of crunching wood? I do. I'm sorry, he brings his A game to this. He knows exactly what to give, how to give it, and how to make it funny. 25 cents! Do you have change for 100? I thought you weren't coming back until you could tear the place down. That's a whole four days away, Henry. Oh, like that's gonna help. <laughs> Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if the whole movie came out of his head. All right, Mr. Walken, we're all set to film the origin story of Hannah Montana. I want bears. What? Bears. You mean like Hannah goes to the zoo or? Half the cast should be bears. Well, I don't think that matches Hannah Montana. Buddy, I'm not budging on the bear thing. Well, your contract says. My contract says I own Disney now. What? My God, it does. How did that happen? I have ways. And you'll notice you won't get control back until a bear movie is made with me in it. Well, I guess we have no choice in the matter. Singing bears. Uh-huh. With hats. I like hats. Meanwhile, Barry's family calls the police to see if they can find him. I thought you officers might enjoy a little nibble of something. Uh. Please help yourself. What do I even say sometimes? It's so odd and random, you feel like you have no choice but to laugh. Like being cornered by Steven Seagal in clown makeup. You laugh out loud because you feel like there's no other option. QT <laughs> Meanwhile, Barry sees Bear Hall is about to be closed down. Oh, I mean, destroyed in big cartoony letters. As he looks over with the owner of the place, how great it used to be. Jimi Hendrix opened here for Vanilla Fudge. But nobody, but nobody was like the country bears. People sitting everywhere, even up in the rafters. Now it's all Splash Mountain dubstep and teacup rappers. I belong here, helping you save this place. Nah. And we can do it with a concert to raise the money. Nah. We can get the band back together. Well, that's just insane. You know half of them joined the Rock of Fire explosion. <laughs> that's the stupidest thing. But Bearhorn Lakehorn can't help but remember the good old days. And we hosted everybody here. Chipmunks, power line, the coming out of their shells tour, and so many Christian bands. If we're gonna get the band back together, we're gonna need some transportation. He then agrees to get the band back together. We're on a mission from Fize. As they pull their old touring bus out of storage. I've been sleeping in there for years! Who's president? Donald Trump. No, really, who's president? He senses parents want to get home, so it fast forwards to get the bears to their destination faster. Excuse me? Sorry, gotta be part of the video shoot. I kinda am the video shoot. Wow, they got... Crystal Harris! Singer! You're Fred Betterhead? Fred from the Country Bears. Yeah. Actually, I'm Nicolas Cage in a bear suit looking for women to punch. I'm in a 12-step program to get over it. 
Speaking of banding together to get through something, this musical moment starts. Fun fact, they had to do 50 retakes because all the people with instruments kept pissing their pants with laughter trying to keep a straight face around Earl Sinclair covered in hairy mold. But seeing the final product, you wouldn't think that. You would know that. You know, people never tell you this is what Shelley Duvall continued to see in the bear scene from The Shining. They asked Fred to be in the band, but Fred wonders how they're gonna get people to the show. Why don't you call Rip Holland, Hen? Rip Holland? Uh, the guy who stole the band from me? Ah, uh, call Rip, yeah. Rip Holland. Uh, Rip? I want to do one of those funny things, like you ever watch F Troop and Agon's like, there's no way I'm wearing that dress, and Forrest Tucker's like, you're wearing that dress, and Agon's like, no way, no how, there's no way I'm wearing that dress, and then they wipe, blah, 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 and Agon's wearing a dress. <laughs> He asks Rip if he can set up a show at Bear Hall, and Rip's response is the same Jason Momoa's wife tells him every night. Well, it's gonna be a squeeze, but I think a little juggling, I can fit it in. And as lame as that lead into him picking up the phone is, it is followed by a very funny joke. I am so back, baby! Excuse me, sir. This is the last time I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna have to leave the store. Yeah, right, like I need you. <laughs> you know, this movie can actually get a few genuine laughs out of me. What? Critic, did we hear you laughing at country bears? Oh, yes, I laughed at country bears. You see, he's mad. Mad! Critic, you're not well. You need medical attention immediately. Oh, piss off! Ah, uh, come on, Critic. We have some sort of shocky thing for you. What does it do? I don't know, shocky stuff. No, screw you guys. I'm gonna like whatever I like in this and none of you can stop me. Oh, no. Yeah! Well, he's got us. Let's get out of here. Wait, 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 hold on a second. I can't let you leave when there's a man watching country bears in there. This calls for drastic action! Oh, yeah, no, I didn't have anything. I was just walking away to think. Oh. Uh, okay. So the Bears tried to get everyone together to do the show by Saturday. Boy, somebody hired Billy McFarland to plan this. As Barry looks over their past competitions and notices one of the acts that lost. He was a bad loser. First I lose to Jabberjaw and the Neptunes, now this. Go back to bear country! Meanwhile, Walken comes back to be the most committed he's ever been since Deer Hunter. Rip Holland, who promoted. Rip Holland. Uh, come here. You see? Look at that reaction. You know, it's like it finally hit him. My God, Bez. Don't let them get you on that, you figured it out. Pond. I still, for the life of me, don't know what he said there. Pond. You could replace it with a duck quacking and make as much sense. <laughs> the bears go to the Swarmin' Hive Honey Club where, you guessed it, they only serve honey. And it's weirdly populated by both bears and People. I just assume this is euthanasia for diabetics. Excuse me, miss. When you're good to mama bear, mama bear's good to you. They go to pick up a member of the band named Zeb, but it turns out he owes money to Queen Bee Latifah here. Oh, I do hope this can be solved with annoying music. Zeb Zuba owes me a whole heap of money. Well, his little friend there has proposed a wager. My house band versus Zeb's fiddle, a little musical duel. I think the bar's accountant is shitting himself, but continue. If he wins, he owes me nothing. But if he loses, I get to keep the country bear tour bus. As a reward or punishment? So I guess it's a country rap battle of sorts as the two musicians dish out insults. I'm here by challenging you to a duel between my guitar and your fiddle. You buzz it, fool. Might I recommend not pissing off the bear? I mean, he is still a bear. I feel like any second this is gonna end with. <laughs> but Zeb ends up winning, though I'm not entirely sure who judged. And we cut to Christopher Walken in his office. Fun fact, this is what he does 10 minutes before every shoot. Wait. 
Uh, Mr. Walken, you were supposed to just say a line into the phone. What's with the missing pants, bunny slippers, and... Is that an anvil? Did you bring an anvil to this? Oh, no! Catch it, that hole has been crushed! Uh, are you doing that again? Are you really doing that all again? Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! You know what? Just roll. I'm sure we can use it for something. Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Doing great, Chris. Oh, doing great. No. Oh, no! The stories were true. Balls of Fury was supposed to be a drama. Country Bear Hall has been crushed! The Bears go to pick up another member named Tennessee who's become an emotionally unbalanced marriage counselor. And yes, that is as hauntingly surreal as it sounds. I mean, what do you think? What do I think? I think you two so dang lucky to have each other. How can nobody laugh at this? It is just so unjustifiably insane. It gets even stranger when he has a mental breakdown over his lost love, who he still keeps pictures of. This is just so uncomfortably cuckoo. Not like me, not like me, Trixie. Oh, I lost her, Trixie. <laughs> what can I even say to such madness? You can call it exactly that, madness. What are you guys doing in here? It took us a long time to lockpick through the door. It was unlocked. Regardless, we are gonna take you away from anguish. Away from despair. Away from country bears! Shocky thing ready? Shock, shock, shock! <sighs> okay, look, I enjoy the film ironically. The same way I would enjoy The Room or Birdemic. Then you acknowledge there is nothing legitimately funny in this. Not one laugh was for the intended purpose. Not one giggle was because of good timing. Not one bit of enjoyment indicated that the filmmakers knew what they were doing. Look, I'm getting away. Stop him! <gasps> oh, critic, you know that this is wrong. I know, I just, I gotta figure this out. Critic, there's only one way to figure this out. Patience, love, and shocky things. Just leave me alone. I gotta go through this myself. Critic! No! The first thing you think of when you hear Dollar Shave Club is probably this. But that's not what it is at all! What's wrong with you? Dollar Shave Club is a great service that delivers great razors to your house. We all have our everyday grooming routines, from showering to brushing our teeth, and yes, shaving. For example, I always shave my head, as well as other things. Just because that's not what Dollar Shave Club is doesn't mean I still can't enjoy it. No matter your routine, Dollar Shave Club has everything you need to help you look, feel, and smell your best. A lot of people who heard of Dollar Shave Club probably think they just do razors, but that's not true. Dollar Shave Club can solve all your grooming needs in one box. Shower products, oral care products, hair products, skin products, butt wipes. I will never get tired of saying that in these sponsorships. And obviously shaving products. Basically, if you have a body, they have you covered. Not only do they ship them right to your house, but the more you buy, the more you save. They call it their handsome discount. And now's the time to see how amazing and high quality their products are. Because right now they have a great offer where you can get their shave, shower, or oral starter kit, each just for five bucks. They sent me all three of their starter sets. Check it out. The shave starter set comes with the executive razor and three ounce tube of Dr. Carver's shave butter. The oral care starter set comes with their weighty toothbrush and a trial size version of their toothpaste. And the shower starter set comes with three trial size versions of their amber lavender body cleanser, citrus and Hawaiian ginger face cleanser, and sage and black pepper shampoo. I'm not gonna lie, the razors are my favorite product, but if I had to choose one that wasn't a razor, it's gotta be the body cleanser, because it smells so freaking good. Especially when I use it on the money I shave. Especially for my $2 shave club. Uh... Take a guess how much that's worth. 200 pennies! This ad was weird, but the deal is not.
Join the club with one of their starter sets for just $5. After that, the Restock Box ships regular sized products at regular price. Just click the link below. The Dollar Shave Club, a great shave at a great price, conveniently delivered right to your home. Tennessee to the group and make their way to a nearby restaurant. Oh my gosh, you're the country bears. Well, gave it away. None taken. I'm still working on it. If you're wondering why this waitress can't act, by the way, it's because it's Jennifer Page. Far better at singing convincingly than speaking convincingly. Oh my gosh, you're the country bears. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to raise my voice like that. You guys inspired me to go after my dream to become a famous singer. Did you make it? Well, I'm in this movie, so nope. She gets a chance to show off her singing chops, and while the musical segments in this aren't awful, they are pretty boring. I feel like the funny awkwardness of this movie comes from how seriously the bears are taken. But in musical numbers, it's kind of expected you're supposed to act a little silly, so it's not quite as much fun. No, I suppose it is a little humorous if you really analyze it. I always bring my guitar to the kitchen. We thought these were our pills, we're really old. And this is when the manager comes in like Fired, 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 animal hazard But on the news they notice, get this, a very weird newscaster This mm -hmm. man is involved in the abduction of this ten-year-old boy in this bus <gasps> We'll keep you updated on Bus Watch I wish I could live my life with the same excitement he uses to say Bus Watch Bus Watch Actually, that guy looks familiar Oh, of course! He's the dude with the viral dog! He should really do cartoons. But the Gravity Falls cops show up and chase them down. The chase itself isn't anything special, but I am loving more and more how they'll randomly put bears in the background. Like they really want to do some universe building where bears get employment. They need to pay the bills. They have lives to live. The more I see them, the more I start laughing. It's just such a peculiar detail. They lose them in the car wash, and again, just the weird acting from these two makes this already odd scene even odder. Where are they? Where'd they go? I don't know. I can't see them. I can't see anything. Can you see anything? No, I can't. We're watching a movie. Do you see? We we're watching a movie. movie. We're I watching a movie right now. We're watching a movie. We're watching a movie. We're watching a movie. Do you see them? We're watching a movie. We're watching a movie. One of them loses his fake mustache. Which is never addressed as to why he wore it. And as a visual gag, this gets a bit of a chuckle out of me. Your hair looks ridiculous. Though he does kind of look like a Medusa head from Castlevania. The bears stay at a hotel and discover Tennessee's old girlfriend is singing there. So they go to- Whoa! Button your shirt, lady! There's children present! I just want to show my bear necessities. Hi now apparently Jess Harnell, the voice of Wacko Warner, is supposed to be somewhere in this bar. Let's see if we can figure out where he is. This next song was written by an old friend of mine in a band called the Country Bears. Woo! Bears rock! This movie's amazing. Even this musical number, which I just said before I don't really get into in this film, is freaking hilarious because they play it so straight. If somebody told you this was a Spike Jones music video, you'd call it genius. Can love stand the test of time that surrounds us? I especially love this one woman who just looks like she's in hell. All the other extras are trying to get into it, but she's just having none of this shit. Every motion she has is like, kill me. Kill me, kill me, kill me, kill me. Fun fact, by the way, that's Bonnie Raitt and Don Healy, the actual singers of this song being sung right now. And they seem way too okay for their voices to be coming out of Yogi and Cindy Bear. They're great. They were always great. Better than the Eagles. Yeah, except in this universe, they're literally Eagles. They go to pick up the last member of the band, but accidentally get the wrong house. Which country music cameo did you blackmail this time? Elton John? That country music icon. Can I help you? Yeah, an apology for Hakuna Matata. That guy looks a lot like Elton John. Nah, uh, Elton John's taller. I need to pick my movies better. I'm sure things will improve when I go to Kingsman 2. They go to a wedding where the final member seems to be schmoozing with the rich, but they later find out he's just the wedding singer. Nevertheless, he still doesn't want to play with them. 
I'm not going. Your family. Then you're going. That was surprisingly gruesome. They're so happy-go-lucky most of the time. It's so weird to see one of them get bear punched to the ground. You can see that as the crime photo in a newspaper. The bears get into an argument about why the band broke up to begin with, and Barry, I guess just now, realizes he should go back home, resulting in this beautifully, awkwardly staged moment. My dad. Okay, so I really have to give credit to the animatronics and the puppeteering in this. It really is first rate. It's amazing the range of expression and movement these costumes emote. It's very well done. But this is the one scene where everybody looks completely lost. The people inside, the puppeteers operating the faces, the cinematographer. Nobody looks like they know what they're supposed to be doing right now. That was like visual dead air. You can practically hear the people inside the suits talking. My dad. Line? Line? Do I have a line? I didn't have a line. Shut up! Shut up! You're running the table! I'm just gonna run off this way. Film it if you want! So Barry goes home. Kind of out of nowhere, but again, emotional arcs aren't really this film's focus. What is the film's focus is working on even stranger questions. Like, Barry listens to Nine Inch Nails? What? Not only does this not match the music he listens to, not only does it not tie into the kind of character he is, though god forbid that'd be really cool and hilarious, but now we have to acknowledge that Disney officially has nine inch nails in one of their properties. And it's the freaking Country Bears! There is no category for this kind of bonkers! Despite Barry reconnecting with his adoptive family and his new family, it looks like Walken has kidnapped the other bears, as shown by this WTF edit. It was that thimble fella. <laughs> oh my god, I have no idea what this movie is doing, but god help me, it's making me laugh. It's making me laugh! Walken puts them all in a cage, with of course a touch of his natural walkening. Move it, come on, what are you waiting I'm for? I'm definitely changing back. Oh, never die, Chris, never die as the family tries to go and save them, but can't fit the bear into the car. Well, what the hell were they gonna do when Barry got older? This better not be used for a screwball situation and or wacky climax. You ruined my life! Walken finally reveals who he is, the kid who lost years ago in the talent show. A weird and rather weak twist, but let's be honest, this was just an excuse to get Christopher Walken to do this. to write a whole movie to get him to do it. Just like, ask him what the definition of car is and he'll just do that. Since that day, I'm plotting my revenge. I love the fact that there's five grown bears, all bigger than Walken, yet none of them want to take him on. Because let's be honest, even an MMA fighter wouldn't want to go up against Walken this crazy. <laughs> The rest of the family, of course, shows up, and can you imagine being the team setting this stunt up, risking their lives so that this crazy shit climax can be filmed? What if something went wrong? What if a stuntman died? He would have taken his last breath in a bear suit, filming the exciting conclusion of the Country Bears movie. That would be on his tombstone. Stunt people should get Oscars. Get on it! They make it to Country Bear Hall, but it looks like no one showed up because their agent made a deal with Walken and didn't promote them. RIP! Oh, but I, it's not me. And just look at this face Walken makes. Even for him, this is channeling a different galaxy. Hey, guy! Long time! Looking good! Henry, you working out? It's like he's reliving a past life of an orangutan. <laughs> but they find out Big Al advertised the show himself, and all the people were waiting in the back. This, of course, leads to the line that brought a torn nation together. This is not over! Yes! Oh, every time he says that line, a nest of pixies is born. They, of course, play to the crowd, even let Barry rock his guitar, and everyone is super excited. Except this guy. He, he's just not into it. Who's that little bear? Well, I'm Captain Hero! Yeah, well, I'm Hogarth! God damn it, that's slightly cooler! I think that's the sound Haley Joe Osment made when he found out what movie he was recording for. The country! Oh, 
well, at least they're still better than Maroon 5. And that was the Country Bears, in all honest to God seriousness? I kinda had a fun time with it. Ha <laughs> ha! We used our shocky thing to get in. It's still unlocked. Seize him! Ah! Ah! Oh, 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 oh. Ah! Oh. This is what we do to people who like the country bears. Is it? I don't know. No one's ever admitted to liking it before. Wait! Can I, like, explain myself? I guess, but we're still gonna shock your testicles occasionally for good measure. Yeah, that's fair. Country Bears. <laughs> it's not an especially well written movie, and you could argue does even less with the idea than the already small amount that was presented. Occasionally, <laughs> there's a joke that works, but for the most part, it's relatively dated humor. Where it does succeed is in how random, strange, and unbalanced it is. For most films, <laughs> being unbalanced is a bad thing, but for this, the tone is so inconsistent that you have no idea if they're gonna go for a laugh or a serious moment. And whichever they choose, it's always hilariously bizarre. It feels like they're just trying anything, any weird performance, any odd line, any freaking kooky way of shooting a scene. And that surprisingly makes it a lot of fun to watch. I have <coughs> no idea what the comedic intent of this movie was. Maybe it was all meant to be laughed at, or maybe it wasn't. But I can say I smiled throughout the whole thing because the humor isn't in the intentional jokes in the foreground, but rather the unintentional jokes in the background. The extras, the crazy line reads, the constant questioning of how and why things are happening. If you go into this movie constantly asking why to everything, any answer you come up with will be hilarious. It's like a zen joke. It just asks you the right questions and you fill in the answers to get the humor. So yeah, I'm Ow! weirdly recommending it. I'm kind of hoping it becomes one of those movies that people look back on and say, what the hell were they thinking? But kind of in a loving way. A way that appreciates the energy, the spontaneity, the strangeness, and all around fun. I'm not entirely sure what this movie was aiming for, but it entertained me and made me laugh. And for a friggin' Country Bears movie to do that no matter what the intent, that is quite <laughs> an accomplishment. Hmm. I guess it does make a little more sense when he puts it like that. My balls don't thank you for your understanding. Yeah, I guess we can let this one go. Well, are you insane? Next he'll be saying that he likes the never-ending story. Wait. You didn't like the never-ending story? Oh, come on. It's long and drawn out and boring, and I'm going to go this way now. I'm the nostalgia critic, and there are some stranger things than liking the Country Bears movie. Uh, let me just figure out how to get this unlocked. Woo! Though not many. Oh, no! Country Bear Hall has been crushed! Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout-out, and this week we are doing the Guide Dog Foundation. The Guide Dog Foundation welcomes people who are blind or visually impaired to a new friend and companion. From their compassionate and skilled instructors, to their exceptional dogs, to their meticulously constructed curriculum, they support their students with an uncompromising commitment to excellence. This is a wonderful group with wonderful animals that help wonderful people. Click on the link and see how you can help create a friendship that'll never be forgotten.